My name is Mark, and I am a sinner saved by the grace of God. I sometimes think, I sometimes think that we should start our services that way, kind of like an AA meeting. Yay. Somebody agrees. That's always <laughs> a testimony from the back. <laughs> yes, one by one, you know, we would stand up and announce who we are and declare, I am a sinner saved by the grace of God. Now, why would I say that? Well, one, it's true. And second of all, it, it really centers us in our faith. And, and third, we, we, we sometimes forget. And what's interesting in that is that uh, who are the people who forget? And, and oftentimes the people who forget are the very people you think shouldn't forget. They're, they're the good folk. They're the, they're the rules keepers. They're, they're the best. They're the church goers. They're folk like you and me gathered here on this Sunday and, and we can forget and go, well, how's that possible? Well, I think of it this way. Long ago and far away, I helped the coach Little League Baseball. It was great. Those were the great days. And, and you know, if you ever coached any kind of team, there's always those young people who are just naturally good at it. They're just born that way. They're just good. They're, they got eye-hand coordination, and, and they are clearly better than the rest. And what's interesting is with those young people who have those gifts, oftentimes they're the hardest ones to coach. They're the hardest ones to coach because... They know they're better than the rest. So why do they need to be coached? They forget because they're kind of good enough that there's still lots that they need to learn and experience. So it is in the journey of faith. If we come together to remember again that you and I, we are we're sinners. Saved by the grace of God. And we need to declare that because it's the truth. And because sometimes, sometimes we forget. And when we forget, there's consequences. And what's interesting today, because it's not often, but all three lessons work together because they all have that as a theme. In the gospel, Simon forgets. Simon forgets. Here he is. He's a good man. He's a Pharisee. He's one of those who set apart, who each and every day of his life tried to live out God's law. He was a righteous man, a good man. And he invites Jesus to come and have dinner with him. And Jesus says yes. And, and Simon is thrilled. And because he has extended this invitation to the traveling rabbi, the doors are open for everyone. It's the perfect evening. It's great. And then this woman comes. <sighs> he couldn't believe it. Now, she could come, but, but she was a known sinner, a, a prostitute. And she arrives. Now, it would have been bad enough that she came in the first place, but then she makes a spectacle out of herself. She fawns all over Jesus. She just won't let him go. She anoints his feet with oil. She's weeping and crying. And then, can you imagine this? She lets her hair down. No proper woman would ever let their hair down in public. And then, you know what she does? She takes that hair and she dries Jesus' feet. Simon is appalled. I mean, if, if Jesus is really a prophet, he should know this woman is a sinner. He should not let her come anywhere near him, let alone touch him. And as we know in the text, Jesus confronts Simon and says, Simon, you have forgotten just like this woman, you, Simon, are a sinner in need of God's grace that you have forgotten. And in your forgetting, you, you have become ungracious. 
You have forgotten, and now all you can do is focus on this woman's sin and not see her grateful response to a gracious God. Simon, you have forgotten, and even though you are a good man, this woman, whose sins are many, stands closer to the kingdom of God than you do. Simon, by Simon, you, you are a sinner in need of God's grace. Remember. You and I gather in this place, and indeed we come and we are sinners, saved by the grace of God. That is the truth. But sometimes we forget. In that first lesson in the Old Testament, David forgot. David forgot. He's the king of Israel. He can do as he pleased, and that's exactly what he winds up doing. And so he sends this man, Uriah, out to the front lines, knowing that he will be killed in the process. And he sends him there to be killed. Why? So he can take his wife. And Nathan comes and confronts him and says, David, David, you have forgotten. You are a sinner in need of God's grace. You've forgotten, David. And in your forgetting, in your forgetting, you think as king you are above the law. You have forgotten. You have forgotten. And in your arrogance, you have abandoned your moral authority as king. David, you have forgotten and you have done a terrible thing. You have sent an innocent man to his death for your own delight and pleasure. David, you are a sinner in need of God's grace. Remember, we gather as God's people in this place to declare that we are sinners saved by the grace of God, and that is the truth, but, but sometimes we forget. The people in the church in Galatia, they forgot. Here they established this new community of faith, this new Christian church, excited about it. But there was a problem, don't you know? These outsiders, these strangers, these Gentiles have the audacity of coming and being a part of this community. So somehow that they could participate in the promises of God. Don't they know Jesus was a Jew and that this faith grew out of Judaism? If they think, if they think they can participate in the gift and promises of God, then they better become Jews first. It's the only way it's going to work. And Paul confronts them and says, People of Galatia, you have forgotten. You've forgotten. You are sinners. Saved by the grace of God. You have forgotten and it has made you unwelcoming. You have forgotten and you now start to think that Jesus died on the cross for you because you're Jews? He died on the cross because you're sinners. You have forgotten and now you have made God's love conditional. People of Galatia, you are sinners saved by the grace of God. Remember. You and I, we gather in this place to declare that indeed we are, each of us sinners, saved by the grace of God. That's the truth. Remember. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.